Uh, hi, my name, my name is Song Woo Park. And I am U at UT Austin. And my advisor is Robert, uh, Dr. Robert Hiss. And I will talk about optimizing the target error rate for link adaptation today. And I'd like to start with the overview of link adaptation. And there are two types of link adaptation techniques. One is power control with a fixed weight. And the other one is rate control with fixed power. And the main target of this power control is uh, voice or control communication. And uh, its goal is to achieve reliable communication. On the other hand, the main target of this uh, rate control with fixed power is uh, data communication. And its goal is to achieve a fast data rate. And strictly speaking, there are other types of uh, I mean, there a combination of this uh, power and rate control. Uh, for example, uh, there are a well-known oral feeling techniques from IMO systems uh, is kind uh, considered as this power and rate control. And the intra and intercell interference reduction for CDMA, um, link or ICIC, intercell interference coordination techniques, uh, uh, they are also considered our power and rate control. And another is their power consumption reduction techniques from Omnic system. But uh, I, uh, we focused on this just uh, the right control with the fixed power. So the scope of this slide is we will be focused on the, this rate control techniques. And uh, this uh, <coughs> one of the well-known rate control techniques is OLA, known as the outer loop link adaptation. And uh, the process is like this. At first, the mobile station estimate the channel and report the channel state information to this base station. And then the base station select the initial MCS level. MCS means the modulation and coding scheme. And then start trans the data transmission. We call this process as you know, loop link adaptation. But uh, there is a main drawback of this main, uh, you know, loop link adaptation. Uh, it is that it can, uh, it is too highly dependent on the accuracy of channel state information. So if the channel state information is not that accurate, then the uh, MCS level selection can be too uh, aggressive or too conservative. So to overcome this drawback, the, the outer loop link adaptation concept appeared. And the concept is like this. The the base, uh, the mobile station detects the, uh, the decoding error and reports the error to the base station. Then the base station adjusts this MCS level to satisfy the target error rate. Uh, for example, if the errors happen too frequently, then the base station lowers the MCS level. And on the other hand, if there, if there is no error at all, then this base station increases the MCS level. Then the, this step three and step four is repeat, uh, repeated at every packet transmission. This is called the outer loop link adaptation. And the, we, the problem is we focus on this the target error rate. And may, <coughs> a lot of pre previous work considers a fixed value such as 1% or 10%. But the problem is that can you do better with this target error rate? And the answer is yes. And I will talk about this. And there are two contributions or about our work. And one is the we analyzed the optimal target error rate uh, using some approximate analysis. And the results showed that the optimal target error rate is inversely related with SINR. And the second one is that we propose the dynamic tag, uh, target error rate technique and adapting the target error rate to SNR value. And the simulator, simulation results show that the trough gain can be up to 30% at a low SINR region. Uh, our optimal prior theorem for the, this rank adaptation is to select MCX index M that maximize the, the effective trough which is defined as this equation. And uh, 
numerator represents the expected value of the size of the transport flux decoded successfully during HARQ process, and the denominator represents the expected value of the number of transmissions that uh, it increased the on initial transmission and retransmissions. And this N of M is indicates the number of transmission when the receiver successfully decodes the packet and uh, its probability mass function is like this equation. And please remember that this XI means the SI value at the I transmission in the hard plug and this FI function uh, indicates the block error rate of the ice transmission of MCS index M. And this small r of M means the transport block size, so we can call it TBS, uh, of the MCS index M. And the answer of M max is the maximum number of transmission, including transmissions, retransmissions during my HIC process, and this one function means the indicated function. Uh, our original criterion is like this, but there is a one problem. There is, uh, the problem is that this is not feasible in a practical system because the base station should select the MCS level 1 at the initial transmission, and the base station cannot predict the future SINRs and plug error rates. So let us relax the criterion assuming that the future block error rates are the same as the current block error rate, then the relaxed criteria can be represented by uh, with this uh, the first SINR and the first block error rate. And interestingly, there are this can be represented this very simple form, and which is quite intuitive. And it means that if the MCS selection is too aggressive, then the this the transport block size is too big, so the initial block, a, block error rate can be very high. So in this case, the effective throughput can be low. And on the other hand, if MC selection is too conservative, then the transport block size is too small, and the effective throughput also can, can also be low. So we need an optimization. The, the first thing, the first uh, I think our work is to model and approximate the, this MCS cells. Uh, the, the left figure is the transport block size and the right figure is about the block error rate. And we approximated, we assumed that the relation between this transport block size and this MCS, MCS index M can be uh, modeled as uh, the linear relationship. It means that the slope is constant over the whole entire region. And second, we assume that the, this block error rate function can be modeled as um, the exponential function, which is usually used. And uh, this, uh, the gap between the MCS indexes, uh, the, uh, this MCS indexes are evenly spaced within, along this the SNR. Uh, in the DB domain, uh, which is also a good target feature of the MCS that design. And actually, this figure is the MCS levels in 3 VPLT case. And let's, uh, let's look at the uh, case one, the infinite MCS set case, uh, where we assume the MCS index M is a continuous real number. And actually, this is not the predictive case, and we will look at the uh, practical case where the MCS index is a discrete internal number. But just to look at this uh, first uh, for the comparison. The, the <coughs> optimal criterion can be represented like this. And we let's define this T function uh, as the con this is the continuous function with respect to M. And this T function, the second partial derivative of this t function is always minus, and it means that this t function is a concave function with respect to this m. And so at the, at the optimal point, the, this partial derivative is becomes zero, and using this, we can derive the optimal plug error rate like this form, a very simple closed form. And 
we can this optimal plug, uh, uh, we can see that this optimal plug error rate is inversely related inversely related to to this the TBS and TBS is the kind of the function of the SNR value. So we show that the, this optimal plug error rate is high at low SNR region and this optimal plug error rate is low at the high SNR region. Uh, let's think about this uh, finite MCS set case where the MCS index M is a uh, discrete integer number. And this uh, MCS level can be selected uh, via a you know, set of these MCS indexes. And in this case, the optimal value, uh, the, this T function can have the maximum value at the optimal point. So using this path, we can derive the upper bound and the lower bound of optimal plug array. And uh, the, uh, the trend is exactly the same as the previous one. So this optimal plug array, upper bound or lower bound, is uh, inversely related with the SIN value. Now this figure shows the, the relations, relationship between the optimal uh, TBS and the optimal plug array. The left figure is about the LT, the, when we using when we use the 27 MCS levels defined in 3 PPRT case. And this black curve represents the optimal plug error rate uh, with MCS, uh, in front of MCS set. And when we use the 27 MCS levels in 3 PPRT case, then the low bound is the, this blue curve and the upper bound is this red curve. And if we, uh, if the additional 27 MCS is, uh, can be used, then the, this the upper and lower bound becomes tighter, as in the right figure. So in this case, the MCS levels, we use the uh, 54 MCS levels. And the main thing is that this the optimal plug error rate is, can be very high at this low SR region, and it can be low at this high SR region. And using this uh, fact, we propose the dynamic target error rate in OLLA system. The, the main point is that the, we adopt the, uh, the target plug array rate based on the average SINR instead of using the fixed value. So just to use the high target plug array at low SINR and use low target plug array at high SINR. So this left figure shows the relationship between SINR and the actual plug array. And this, the blue curve shows the our proposed one. And this red curve shows the OLLA with the fixed target error, uh, fixed target plug error rate, 10%. And you can see that it, at the extremely low SINR region, even there this uh, fixed, uh, the OLLA with fixed target error rate cannot meet the fixed target error rate 10% because even the lowest MCS level cannot meet this 10% uh, target plug error rate. So in this case, the plug, actual plug error rate can be higher. And the similar thing happens in the ex at extremely high SNR region. And the right figure shows the turf gain of this dynamic plug error rate. And you can see that this the, at low SNR region, the drop gain can be up to 30%. And you can see that this the optimal target error rate, the gap between optimal target plug error, error rate and the fixed target error rate 10% is, uh, big, is big in this low SNR region. So the drop gain can be very high in this low SNR region. But in the at high SNR region where the gap is uh, small, then the gain is much more. Now I would like to conclude my talk. The, the we try the close form expression of the optimal target plug error rate. And uh, the optimal target plug error rate is inversely related with the SINR. And we also propose the dynamic target plug error rate technique using this the close form expression. So in this case, the drop gain can be up to 30% in low SINR region. 
Thank you.